Hello everyone, welcome to AI Anytime channel. In this video, we are going to explore Llama 3.1 405 billion parameter size model. We're going to deploy that on RunPod on multiple GPU. So RunPod is an LLM provider, but you can use anything you want. SageMaker, Vertix AI, Notebook Instances, Azure ML, Lambda Labs, Vast AI, your local systems. If you have all the compute, you choose anything you want. I'm going to use RunPod because I have some credits left in RunPod and I can deploy the biggest open source model and the best, by the way. You know, that's what it has shown on the leaderboards. 405 billion params, guys. And that's what we're going to deploy in this video through Olama. And we're going to use Olama Web UI to, you know, try it out and see how we can use it. So the 405B model through Olama that we are going to deploy and inference is going to be 4-bit quantized. So that's what they have been saying on internet that we need at least 250 GB of VRAM or at least 240 GB of VRAM to be precise, you know, or the GPU memory to load the model and start inferencing it. And I can just use run power because it, it gives me that. Now here, if you look at on my screen, I am on run pod right now and I have some credits left. And you have to come here on the ports in the left hand side, click on ports, click on deploy. Now, once you click on deploy, you know how much we need. We need uh, multiple GPUs. I'm going to select on H100 PCIe. I have explained all of these PCIe, SXM in my previous videos. Watch that video. I'll give the link in description, NVL and everything. Now, here I'm going to have H100 PCI and I'm going to have these three GPUs. Now, when you select three GPUs, it shows that it's going to cost you around $10 per hour. So you should have at least $15 or something minimum. Now, that's, that's what you should have. So it, it will cost you a bit. Now, I'm going to just, you know, uh, uh, do here. Now, I'm going to click on edit template. So let's edit the template. Now, what do you mean here when you say edit template that when the model will be downloaded here in this run pod environment, so there will be a cache. Uh, that cache uh, storage for you where the model will be downloaded from hugging face so you need 20 gb will not be enough now in that case you have to make this at least 250 gb you know to store the model weights you know within the run uh, run pod workspace environment because this is the volume mount path container disk it has to be 250 gb you know at least and then uh, to store the downloaded llama model so it's it's basically basically gets stored here you know now uh, this is fine. Uh, now, once that is done, now what we're going to do next is we're going to just click on and you can make a few more changes. Okay, now if you look at this ports here, so if you look at this port, you keep the container image as, as it is, you do not have to change any container uh, thingy. Now, here you have to add a few more ports. So, I'm going to do is 11434. So, that's the port that I'm going to uh, add. And in the expose, uh, no, that's not required. In the en environmental variable, you can just add an environmental variable. The reason being because we want to use this from our local machine. So what you're gonna do is Olama host, and in Olama host, you have to give a value. Just give your local host value. So just this is this is the thing that you have to make change. Let me just show you. So in the container disk, make it 250 GB. In expose HTTP ports max 10. So it says it can take Take max as 10 port. So this is what I have done. You know, uh, 888, 11434, and then Olama host, and this. This is fine. And then you just do set override. Now, once you do set overrides, you have to basically just uh, click set overrides and deploy. So let me just come below, and then just deploy on demand. So just click on uh, deploy on demand, and it will deploy. Now I'm deploying it. It will take a bit of time. Uh, for you know deploying and uh, get the machine up and running now once that is running you can uh, just uh, Click connect to connect with it. So let me just show you now. It says running now when you expand that you can find out all the logs here You can see these are the these are the things where you can find out all of your logs. It says Jupyter lab started Now you can also connect with your Jupyter lab. So let me show you connect you can see it says connect to Jupyter Lab HTTP service. That's where 11434. That's where the Olama runs, guys. By the way, now you can also click on this and it will open a Jupyter Lab. 
now i want i can do it locally as well and i can also do it you know through uh, jupiter lab as well now, if you want to do it uh, locally you have to basically do uh, you have to copy this ssh command that you see the basic ssh command and then here you open a terminal and in terminal you just have to come and that's the ssh command that you know it has shown you need to configure your ssh uh, with run pod so basically if you haven't done it yet let me show you how you can do it so you click on this connect and you click on uh, configure public key now you have to run this command if you're running it for the first time and it will create you a public private key pair and then you have to copy the public key and then update here in this uh, uh, in the settings if you come down you scroll down and then you'll have ssh public key so i'm not going to show you that here you have to expand that and copy your public key you can also if you're on linux you can just do on cat and the file and you can just copy the public key content if you are on, on windows you can just do the vs code thing and do it now this time i'm gonna do is uh, i'm just gonna go back here in the uh, ports it's not required probably let's come back here and i'm just gonna run the command excuse me So I'm downloading Olama, right? Because we have to set up Olama. If you don't know Olama, okay. Uh, Olama basically helps you. It's a framework. It's a Python library that helps you, you know, uh, inference large language models, uh, you know, with on a compute limited devices. It also has its web UI. It also has a lot of other things, you know, that, that you want to use. It, it provides you a lot of embeddings models, uh, the LLMs and whatnot. So it does a lot of things that you can do. Now, uh, Excuse me. It says you can look at here what it's saying. The Olama API is now available at this local host. Okay. Uh, install complete run Olama uh, from the command line. Now we have to run the Olama run the model. Let me show you here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you Olama uh, Llama 3.1. When you write on that, it takes you to this website, and here you can pull the 405 billion parameter size model. So this is what you have to do. You have to copy this and then run it. Cool guys, so once your Olama installation is completed, as you can see, it says install complete. Now the next command is to run the Llama 3.1405B model. Okay, so basically we have to download this model. Now this model will be downloaded and it's it's a huge model, around 200 GB plus size, and it's going to take, I'll not say years, but it's going to take at least a few hours. You know, if at least an hour for me because my internet bandwidth is not that high. So what I'm going to do now, pause the video and come back once this is done. And then we're going to run the Docker command to run this. Now, once this is pulled and saved in your directory or in the environment, the workspace, we're going to use Docker to run this model, 405 billion parameter size model through Open Web UI, which is earlier used to known as Olama Web UI. Now it's known... Uh, Web open web UI. We're gonna run that within a Docker container and start playing with Llama 3.1405 billion size model. So let's wait for it, guys. Now, as you guys can see, that model has been pulled. It says pulling manifest and all the models 231 GB, guys. It's humongous. So now it seems like this there is a war of building the biggest of you know the largest of LLMs. That's the war. Who builds or who creates the largest LLM? The uh, you know having the most parameters in size. I want the smallest one that that outperforms the others. But that's not how it works statistically. If you look at the statistics, if you look at uh, that's not how it works. There are some theory. Uh, for a domain-specific tasks, it might work. Now we are waiting for it. I'm waiting for it to get it done so I can just uh, you know just ask some questions and and then we go into the docker thingy for a more interactive uh, you know more interactive session that's that's the idea and it says verifying sha 256 digest so it's going to take some time you know because you have downloaded a huge file and system has to understand uh, that you haven't uh, downloaded a corrupted file okay guys as you can see everything has been success let's ask a question what is 2 plus 2?
that's the question I'm asking what is 2 plus 2 and I'm expecting that it should answer that it is 4 okay now it's a it's a huge model it's humongous you can see it says 2 plus 2 is 4 now uh, let's ask write fast API code to make an API call using request module now that's what I'm asking you can see the speed here to uh, the tokens per second which is fantastic to create a fast API application that makes an API call using the request module you will first need to ensure you have fast API and you recon blah 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 and then it keeps on giving you some output so right now what we are doing we are basically you know let me just open this we are basically inferencing 405 billion parameter size model uh, that has been deployed within our own uh, managed uh, like you can say managed infra on run pod you know and we have set it up and you saw how we connected you can also do it on the jupiter lab itself on a run pod but here i am doing it in my system locally here you can see it by doing an ssh now we can also use uh, uh open web ui that you're gonna you can run that in docker container now, but this is how you run it so this might not look that fancy to you but this is available uh you know on the local host if you if you open that as well right now and this is interesting guys let me just go a bit up and you can find it out you know you, you can see this command here that is available at this 11434 and yeah if you come here okay and we're going to talk about it in a bit let's let's first this complete now what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, show you how you can run this within docker container as well so let's just paste this docker command if you look at this docker command what we are doing if you don't know docker docker is a container technology helps you build and ship software faster so earlier when we used to do software development a lot of version conflicts dependencies conflicts were used to happen you know uh, earlier now through docker it's a container technology if your software supports uh docker and it's if you are using a, a specific os and if if the other system also has docker and if your program is running in your machine then it will run in their machine as well if they support docker okay now that's very simple now you can there's not a docker tutorial i have covered uh you know these things in my previous videos on docker you can find it out and there are other youtubers you know who are better than me when it comes to docker so you can watch their video now if you look at here it says docker run hyphen d which which is means which means that hyphen d is going to run this in a detached mode so you are not blocking the terminal so that basically runs in background that's what hyphen d is hyphen p is port so we're gonna run on 3000 and then colon 8000 because we're gonna access this uh uh you will know that it, we're gonna access this on local host 3000 that's what we are specifying here on 8080 8080 is basically the tcp port and then we are giving the old llama base url now this is the base url that we have and if you if you look at this this is my pod id now i have to change this pod id uh, according to your pod id and the rest remains same which is 11434.proxy.runpod.net and then hyphen v open web ui because we're going to run open web ui and it's you know it's basically going to persist a few things restart always and this is where it's going to pull the model in from so that's what we're going to do it here guys all right so just hit enter and then it will run that within a docker container you can see it says unable to find image so it's basically just download uh, just gonna download the open web ui image from this github container registry that's called ghcr you have docker container registry you have azure container registry you have uh, uh ek elastic container ecr as well on aws and then you have gcr google container registry all the clouds have their own container registries it's gonna download it and then open it for you all right guys as you can see our open wave ui we have logged in and we are able to access on local host 3000 so it's running you can see it's running in the detached mode it has downloaded all the things that you need and you can also uh, do it interactively right now what we did we uh, set up run pod on couple like three gpus on a deployed a pod and then uh, deployed olama 400 uh, Olama and then also pull the model 
Llama 3.145 billion model. You can see here, you know, in the terminal here, we ran that within a Docker container using this command and this open web UI. You can go and keep doing, uh, keep trying it out and keep building it here. But I think the video is getting a bit longer. If you want to understand open web UI, I'll give the link in description where I just created a model recently for how to use open web UI for LLM inference. Now, that's all for this video, guys. It's a uh, it was a tricky video that probably you might face error sometimes if you have any questions let me know in the comment box you can also reach out to me through my social media channels join our discord community i'll give the link in description uh if you like the content please hit the like icon if you haven't subscribed the channel yet please do subscribe the channel guys that motivates me to create more such videos in your future keep building guys keep deploying this model and test it out do fine tuning build racks that's how you learn that's all for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.